Hello Italian supercar fans. This is a rare, rare supercar. I remember reading articles of this thing when I was a kid. I'm like, this thing's awesome. And the reason why it looks awesome is because it was uh, designed by Mar Marcello Gandini and also the engineer Claudio Zampoli, who uh, was an engineer for Lamborghini at the time. And henceforth, it looks like a Lamborghini Diablo, right? But what makes this a little different is it has a V16 instead of a V12. That V16 would have uh, 540 horsepower. And it, well, let me just check how, many, how much capacity the thing had. Six liters, all right? It's a rear wheel drive only car. And uh, let's see, only 13 of these were made as coupes and one Spider was made between 1991 and 2003. So, that's nice that it tells you, you know, when this came out. Uh, nice that it tells you on the box, all this stuff. So they, there are versions with the lights down, but I know the panel gaps would be really gappy, so I went with the uh, lights up version. I haven't reviewed a Power 64 in a long time because I feel like they don't, this is such a waste of plastic. You know, there's no sensitive parts other than the mirrors. So I would rather not have to buy this plastic box because A, I don't have room to collect stuff. And then B, I'm just paying for garbage, you know? It's, I would much prefer if this brand would just go to, you know, Mini GT packaging or TLV packaging because these models simply aren't nice enough to warrant such a waste of plastic, in my opinion. That's just me. So I'd probably collect more from the brand if they didn't make me buy that stuff. So let's learn a little bit about the real world uh, besides the car. Uh, according to Wikipedia, this thing was uh, developed also with a music composer. His name is Giovanni Giorgio Moroder. And he is credited to be the founder of European uh, disco and EDM music in Europe. I'll be honest with you, I've never listened to the person's music, but there's a band called Daft Punk, which you may have heard of. Uh, they have a song called Giorgio by Mor Morador, and that's a really cool song. It's a, it's a credit or a tribute to this composer, you know, with all the synthesizer music and stuff like that. So if you like uh, EDM music, you know, stuff without lyrics and stuff, it's really cool. You should probably uh, look that up on YouTube and listen to it. So that's interesting. Uh, I don't know. I assume Mr. Morador made a lot of money being a music composer because I know Daft Punk made it's making a lot of money. They were offered a million dollars to play at Coachella and they declined to do so. Okay. Oh, there's that plastic box making noise. All right, that was a long introduction. Sorry, three minutes in. I'm just trying to get a better light angle here and I'm always messing around with different camera mounts. So this camera mount kind of is suspended in the air and so it wobbles and for some reason I cannot focus on this car. There we go. So this purple is metallic, it looks like, so that's nice. Hopefully it won't get paint rash in the future. And then uh, <laughs> I guess we'll start with the front wheel here. All right. Nice that it's got the uh, perimeter bolts there and like a center knockoff it looks like and then no brakes or anything like that but the, for the price that's fine and this is actually I think an improvement Power 64 usually had really flat tires but this one actually has some curvature going into the wheel so I feel that's more realistic than their prior efforts and the back also seems to have some curvature or something. Something's a little bit different from previous Power 64, so I think that's good that they're trying to make advancements. Uh, the I gotta say, the uh, wheel gap is very nice. I mean, it's really tight up there. That's quite realistic, I think, to the photos, even when it's suspended in the air. There's no, like, not much droop, All right? So I think if, you ex if it's actually on the ground, on a table, it'll be like that tight. So that's very good, uh, but the result is it's not a Hot Wheels, right? It technically rolls, but it doesn't roll smooth, and that's fine by me, you know? I don't want to collect Hot Wheels as much, you know? Those are toys. I'd rather collect scale models, so you got to sacrifice some of the toy functions to have more realistic looking objects. There's a little dimple here, uh, probably for a lock. 
side strakes here. You know, they oddly sound plastic though. Well, I guess it doesn't matter. I saw some photos where the side strakes went this way, vertically. So there must have been a change at some point in time in the, in the uh, offering. Okay, uh, the mirrors are separate pieces and they're sticking out quite a bit. There's a little shiny sticker. I'm a little skeptical if those will stay on there for a long time, but right now they're there. The window molding is printed black on the outside surface, it seems. Same with here. Okay. And then going to the front, we have turn signals. Hold on, I have focus again. Oh, are these separate pieces? I think those uh, little white turn signal things or running lights, yeah, they're separate pieces because there's a little molding flash there. So that's good, I think. I don't know, it's hard to say because there's so much molding flash it doesn't look nice. But I, I instinctively like separate pieces more than paint. But unfortunately, look at this one. It's not laid in correctly. Huh, hold on, let's see if I jam my fingernail in there if it'll shift it over. Hmm. Maybe it's better. Yeah, there's not supposed to be a gap here based on that front photograph. So unfortunately I think I got a bad piece of plastic for this one. This one seems a little bit better, of course. So that's a tough call. You know, is plastic always better? Or paint? You know, bad plastic versus paint. I don't know the answer to that. Some recesses here. These are supposed to be fog lights, these two things, so no silver paint there. And then this, I guess, is maybe a brake duct or something. Some ribs there. All right, uh, the top here looks pretty nice. Yeah, not too orange peely. There's a little vent detail there. And so the headlights are separate pieces. And since they're in the up position, I guess it doesn't look so bad. I think if they're in the down position, they would look a lot worse. Okay, so now the headlights have clear plastic pieces in them and they they look pretty good I think they, they look acceptable to me I think that looks nice pretty funky four headlights like that all right a uh, little windscreen wiper detail mm, it's raised painted black I guess yeah all right same with that and yeah, a little vent again there this side no quality problems that I can see dent to the tires no biggie because I can just do that and then the taillights are uh, much better than the front end I think so we have uh, the difference of the, the markers here that color versus the red so that's nice even though it's the same piece of plastic I think uh, it's kind of lame though the tail pipes here first of all I don't know why the inner ones look correct but the outer ones do not <laughs> right there's supposed to be four tail pipes here it's a v16 so I don't know why these two ends end pipes are blanked off. I don't think it's too much paint. I think it's literally a weird, if not dumb, di design decision. I mean, why would you do that? If you can clearly mold hollow looking tubes, why would you not do that on all four? I don't know, maybe it is too much paint. Please leave a comment if you have one and they actually look like four tubes. There's no silver paint on them or any sort of metallic looking paint, so, you know, I've never seen purple exhaust pipes myself. Okay, a little vent detail there. Those should be black. Uh, I guess that's like maybe an un uh, air comes, it's supposed to come this way. All right. So, uh, printing on the back is very crisp and clear, though. Chisetta, I think that's how you pronounce it. Moroder, yeah, that's the music composer. Composer. Uh, this might be a separate piece, just based on the color difference. Does it move? No, no, I think it's just a separate piece. Okay, interesting. So we have some, uh, big strakes here going on. Maybe the engine vents, and it looks like there's black in there. Yeah, I don't think that's purple I'm touching down there. Alright, these vents here, no black paint though. Alright... And then uh, the thing screwed together, so that's nice. Our Power 64s have slicks, they don't have treads. There's some vent detail there. I'm okay with the slicks, I mean, I'd rather have slick tires than have big truck knobby tires, like a lot of other brands do. I mean, you can't see tread blocks on a road tire from the side, so I don't know why these brands always have these knobbies on them. 
There's something holding this up. Uh, maybe that wasn't unscrewed all the way. Okay. So that's interesting, yeah, how they bothered to paint that. I guess it's good. The window is just held up with one press fitting and then two little tabs there. I think what's going on is the side windows pop into the these recesses. So they're being locked in by the side windows. So no glue or anything like that is needed. Okay, uh, yeah, so let's we'll see the interior. Well, yeah, standard black molded interior details. Not bad. I do feel like the seats maybe are a little bit weird. I mean, why are the leg rests, why is the cushion so long? Uh, and the seat back not tall. Yeah, well, whatever. Maybe it's because you're in a laid back position. And then no, no detail as far as the instrument pinnacle that I can see. I can't see any like round circles or anything in there. No, it's just a flat surface. Uh, I do see some, I did see some interior pics where the thing was red, so... So there are two pins glued holding the uh, dashboard on. I pried a knife under there and I apparently snapped one of the pins, but at least one of them is still intact, so maybe it'll align properly. Let's see. Yeah, I guess that's good enough. Alright. This is his Vallejo uh, water-based acrylic. Is that up there on the way? Oh, all right, cool. So that, that red thing is the engine cover. I was wondering why is there no engine detail molded, but maybe there's an engine cover. Uh, I don't know, I don't know. Leave a comment if you do. screwdriver here so I don't strip out those threads there Okay, so there you see. Yeah, I think it's worth repainting the interior because the windows are so big, at least the front and rear ones. The side, you're not gonna see much. All right. So I brought out a few Lamborghinis since that's pretty much what it looks like. But this is the old concept Bravo from 1974. Such a cool, clean design. I forget who styled that. Maybe the Bertone? Bertone? But I don't know. There's, uh, I think, the original Diablo from 1990. This is, these are all Kyoshos I'm showing you, by the way. Then we have the Diablo SV, which I believe came out in 1995, okay. And then in 1999, they had this SV. So the Power 64 has the reflective mirrors. Uh, they both, both brands have clear headlights. It's just that by design, they don't really have them except for that one. And both should usually have plastic tail lights. So I added a license plate to these. I'll have to probably do that to this as well later. So I think it's really on par with like uh, the older Kyosho's, maybe a little bit better with the six pieces of plastic up front and the, the mirrors, but no, no brake systems, of course. So. Uh, which is understandable, but uh, as I mentioned before from in my other power reviews if you didn't have to buy that plastic box They could have made a better model They could have put the money into the model instead of the packaging So I don't know why brands continually do that uh, Selling packaging is not what you're trying to sell. You're trying to sell a better product, right? 
Call me crazy. All right, well, anyways, it's nice that they did this subject matter. I mean, in only 13 of these cars, 14 of these cars were ever made in the real world. I think it's cool that Power 64 chose to do this. Uh, I wouldn't even mind if someone did this in resin, though. Uh, it's such a funky car, I'd probably buy that model if it was a resin brand. All right, well, thanks for watching, guys. I will put this back in this display case and groan about that again. See you guys. See you in the next Power 64 video.